Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are working on our metal planer restoration and the task for today is I'm going to be working with the legs that go on this machine. We've got it back from grinding now. I really need to get this thing sitting back on the ground, but before I do, I really want to make some slight modifications to these uh, legs in order that I can do some leveling to the machine. So. Um, when we set this machine up on the grinder, we pay particular attention to get everything ground in a perfect plane. And just knowing from working with big machines like this in the past, you can easily adjust, change the plane, add twists, whatever, just by adjusting feet on the bottom of it. And I don't want to be in a situation where we set it down the ground, the concrete's not perfectly level, whatever, and then move it someplace else and the machine changed. So what I want to be able to have is the ability to have adjustments in all of the legs, all the feet on this machine, uh, that I can adjust it and tweak it and get that bed perfectly level each and every time. So this is the, the castings. There's two castings just like this right here, one on each end. There's also two smaller legs in the middle. I'm going to be doing those. Those are going to have to be done a little bit differently, but right now I'm focused on the two on the ends. There's basically four feet two on each of the two legs and uh, we need to put some levelers in here so let me kind of zoom in here and show you my game plan and then we're going to get started making these modifications so again each of the two legs uh, one on each end has two feet on the bottom of these pads these uh, pads are about let's see what these are a little over three quarters of an inch thick you know and I could come in here drill a hole tap it, thread it so that I could put my screw in here and just jack up and down these castings. But honestly, guys, I'm a little bit hesitant to do that uh, because I'm worried that you could break this piece out. I'm just gonna have a lot of weight on it. If things start moving around, um, I could see we're putting that hole in there, it could weaken that, we get a crack and boom, we, we bust it out. So instead of threading uh, the castings, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to drill a through hole through it, large enough for that 5 8 inch bolt to go through. And I've got a couple pieces of steel here. And these are, I think, quarter inch thick, four inches wide. What I'm going to do is actually drill a hole, weld a nut into this, and let that be my jacking point. And then basically the machine is sitting on the whole foot here, it's sitting on top of this piece here. Uh, it'll be supported by that threaded nut, and then of course be coming down and have the, have the bolt sticking out to a single point below it. But we'll be having a bigger area for this to sit on. I, I like that idea better. Um, it just gives some more stability, I think, to the whole machine and where it's sitting on a little bit larger area than just sitting on those threads in that casting that could break out if we're not careful. So that's my plan. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this over to the radial drill, get the holes drilled in the two castings, and then we'll start working on uh, the, the metal pieces here for them to sit on. I've got my casting up over here on the radial drill and uh, my front two are lined up on some T slots and it just worked out where I had a tapped hole right here in the center of the table. It's a little bit larger bolt, but uh, the spacing worked out good. So I got this basically bolted down in three points now. That is not going anywhere and we can come in here and do our drilling up on the top now. With the legs all nice and secure. I'm going to swing the uh, radio drill around. Let's see, it needs to come down a little bit. I've already found my locations and I've center punched them. I'm just going to take my center punch here and put in the drill. I'm going to use this as a pointer to help me find where this needs to go to. So we'll just come over here, get right over that hole or that center punch. I 
I think that's it. I'm gonna lock everything in place. Start with a uh, 3 8 inch diameter hole, starter hole. Let's see, we're drilling 3 8 in cast iron. It's uh, suggesting 1,019 RPMs. So I've got 990, which is right there. And we'll come down and drill that hole. change drill bits and um, I've got a size what is this this is um, 21 30 seconds which is right over it's a little over 5 8 5 8 is gonna be the size of the hole going through there that just gives me a little bit of wiggle room I need to I got a seal that's leaking up underneath this thing just a little bit I need to get in here and fix this machine at some point in time. All right, so let's look over here again. 5 8 in cast iron, which suggests an RPM of 611. And let's see what we got close to that. Uh, we'll go to 505. It's a little bit under. But that's about as close as I got. Right there. Same drill. Same thing, we'll come in here and uh, drill that through. Same thing as before, I start by putting my uh, drill or my punch in there rather. And what I want to do is I want to line right up on that. Right there, we we'll lock the tables down or lock the head down. Start with our three eighths inch hole. All right, got our feed slowed down to five fifty and run that one through. So guys, I've got a little change in plans. Uh, after getting all this ready to go, I just didn't really like the way things were looking and decided to go a little bit different route. So we got our holes here. The initial plan was, was I was gonna drill a couple of holes in this quarter inch bar put up underneath here, basically weld some nuts in there, and that would be my adjusting point. So we'd have the, the screws coming through the two points, and we'd have this uh, plate that it was sitting on. But number one, I just thought it was a little bit too thin, quarter inch here, really not covering the whole pads. So plan B. I um, took and kind of drew up in Fusion 360 the footprint of my machine. I put a connecting bar through here. My nuts will just fit down in the holes. I just had them go ahead and just cut that out on the 
on the plasma cam rather than having to drill those out. And I really like this a lot better. It's a little bit beefier. Uh, this is 3 8 inch thick plate. So it's an eighth of an inch thicker, 50% thicker than what I had before. And that's gonna just give me a better a point to really adjust off of. And uh, really most of the weight's gonna be in this area, but I got a full footprint now, full pad up underneath these feet uh, that it's gonna be resting on. I just like this a whole lot better. So like I said, I just drew, drew this up real quick in a Fusion 360. And uh, I got a couple of guys around that can uh, cut this kind of stuff. And, because this was kind of a rush job, I just used a local shop here that can do it. Uh, paid them to get that done, no big deal. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and uh, run some bolts up through the holes uh, in here. We will, that way everything will be properly positioned and then I will take this over and weld these nuts in place and everything should be perfectly aligned. That's the game plan. And then I'll have me a nice uh, adjustment platform to, so that I can do the height adjustment on this machine. So we'll get these in here. I'll go set up my welder and we'll weld these nuts in place. I've got my Lincoln Electric Power MIG 210 MP set up over here and uh, we're just gonna MIG these in place. Basically just weld around this nut so everything is nice where it needs to be is set up just like we need it. Gonna tack them first. I think that's be good. And just like that, I think we've got these pretty well knocked out. So uh, we welded those in. Uh, I did flip them over and weld them from the bottom and just kind of grind that flush, clean these up with the grinder a little bit, painted them, and uh, we've got them mounted on here. So I've, I decided to go with the, the big end of the, of the bolt down. That just gives me a little bit surf, bigger surface area that the weight's bearing onto. And uh, we'll put some plates up underneath this on the concrete so that it's not all getting in one point. So it'll spread it out over a wider area. In fact, I may even use those pieces that I cut originally uh, for these to sit on to. And uh, there's also a jam nut up under the bottom here, and that will allow me to be able to tighten it down, lock it in place uh, once we get everything leveled up. But uh, I think this is gonna work out just fine. Just another look here where you can see it from a different angle. I really like the idea now that we've got basically this whole pad that the foot's sitting on supported by the metal. Um, it's, I think it's gonna work just fine. Most of my machines are sitting on points like this uh, and that's just how you level them out. And this is gonna work just great. Um, so I think we got this part done. Uh, now the part is the get them over and onto the machine itself and get the machine leveled up. Uh, there's also two smaller feet that go in the center and I'm probably gonna go ahead and get the outside legs on first. Um, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit different process to get some leveling feet in the center uh, feet. It's a little bit different setup. That's probably gonna be another video altogether. So uh, I guess now Need to do some rigging and get our planer out here where we can get these feet up underneath them. It's gonna be fun doing that by myself. It'd be a lot better if it had some help here, but I'm a one man job, one man shop here most of the time. So uh, we're just gonna make do with what we got. I think we're about ready to go ahead and lift the planer up and move it over where I can start working on it. I've had it kind of parked over here since we got it back from grinding where it was just kind of out of the way. It's up on some cribbing and we put it in here using the gantry crane. Now, uh, just a little bit about my rigging here. So we got a, we got a three ton grant gantry crane here, a 6,000 pounds maximum. I got a three ton um, chain hoist. Uh, the straps on here are rated for, depending on how, you how you're uh, using them, the lowest mount is a choke 
which is 2,100 pounds, uh, more of a, uh, a vertical, like we're lifting here is about 2,600 pounds, vertical baskets, 2,200 pounds. I'm just gonna conservatively say we shouldn't have any problem lifting 2,000 pounds each with these uh, straps. And that's actually leaving me some, some room in there. When we were up in Milwaukee, we weighed the planer and the table, and the combined weight that we're sitting right here is about 1,800 pounds. So basically, each one of these is rated well above the maximum weight of everything. So, you know, on really and truly each strap, assuming we got an equally distributed load, it's, it's about 500 pounds per strap. Now, uh, I'm not gonna go with that number because I wanna be ultra safe, but my point is is that we are, we should be safe here. And we've got everything going through a nice clevis here up on the hoist. Hopefully, uh, we won't have any problems here. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, get this picked up, get it suspended. And I think we're there, so I'm just gonna pull this one out. We'll pull the back one out here. That will give us some room to get this out of here. I am going to um, kind of pull this over. I need to get it away from that machine that we're up next to, so we're just gonna pull the whole load over. That should give me plenty of clearance over here. And uh, this is when I could really use an extra hand rolling this thing out, but uh, we'll make do. Let's uh, get it going in the right direction. I want to start making a turn with this. All right, we got our position where I want it to be, and we're dropping it down onto some cribbing here. It's going to be roughly the same right height to put the legs up underneath it if I did my measurements right. But. Um, I want to have the cribbing up under it just as a safety factor. I really don't want to be working up under this machine with it just suspended on the crane. So let me uh, make sure we're on a good, solid foundation here. And we are. So uh, I think we're ready now to get our legs over here and get them attached. So I got my leg just kind of propped up up underneath here. And what I want to do is go ahead and try to get these bolts started. All right, I got one started. Bolt started down here. I don't want to tighten it all the way up but I do want to get it up there. That should help me get the other ones lined up. All right, that one's started.
Okay. All right, we got our back leg on here. I'm gonna get a ratchet up underneath there and just snug those up by hand, but we are where we need to be. So let's get the other leg on on the other side. All right, same as before. Let's, uh, get our holes lined up here. All right, I got my first bolt in. Second bolts in. Third bolts in. All right, let's tighten them all up. All right, we're going to pick up this end of the planer and just enough to get that cribbing out from underneath it. I'm just going to take that one block out. We'll leave the rest there for now. And now what I'm going to do is put this uh, plate up underneath here so that I've got something for those screws to set on so that I'm not just going right onto my concrete. And we'll bring her down. All right, let's go to the other side. We'll do the same thing. Just end up, same process. That's high enough. Take that out. Get this up underneath the feet. All right, she's back on her own four feet again. And we're about done with what we're gonna do today. Well, look at there. We got her sitting back on her feet again. All looks good. I've got leveling points on four corners where I can get this thing leveled out when the time comes. Uh, I mentioned I have the center legs. There's two of them here. Uh, they're like this one here, this one's upside down. They're cored out castings, so they're hollow on the inside. I got a big hole in here, and uh, I basically am gonna have to do some modifications to these where I also have the ability to um, level them. So uh, that's gonna be probably my next upcoming video on the planer, we're just gonna be doing the modifications of this. I got a real good plan for that. So you'll have to stay tuned to see how we solve that problem and get those mounted up underneath here as well. Once I have all six legs up underneath here, then we can really start working on trying to get this uh, bed leveled out. And uh, probably what I'll do is go ahead and start reassembling everything up underneath it. I want it to pretty much have everything up underneath it and then we will start working on scraping in the ways on this 
and uh, there's lots of other things that are going to have to happen between now and then. So lots more to come on the plane of restoration, but we are definitely making progress. Glad to have it here. This is where I'm going to assemble everything. This is where I'm going to set everything up. This is not where it's going to stay once I get it all put back together. We're going to move it to its uh, resting place where it's going to sit in the shop. Of course, we'll have to re-level everything and everything once we do that. But this is going to be where I do all of my assembly. So we should be ready to go. That's going to be a wrap, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, comments are always appreciated. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we will catch you on the next video.